Hello, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. In today's sixth grade math review video, we will be giving an overview of converting fractions to decimals. Remember sixth graders, if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. Have you been having a little trouble because of virtual learning and or COVID-19 to grasp math concepts? Does your child need just a little more help grasping challenging math concepts? Well, I have good news. Hype Math is offering online one-on-one -on -one tutoring for second to eighth grade students. You can call or text 682-233 3087 for a free assessment and free 30 minute consultation or go to our website hypemath.com and fill out a contact form. Let's look at the three strategies students can use when converting fractions to decimals. The first one is fractions with base 10 denominators. The second is fractions that can be multiplied to make the denominator a base 10 number and also long division. For our first strategy, students convert a fraction whose denominator is a power of 10. That means it's a multiple of 10 like 10, 100, or 1000. Let's look at an example. We have as a fraction 47 over 100 and we want to convert that into a decimal. Our first step will be counting the number of zeros in the denominator. We have one, two, and then we are going to delete the denominator. All we will have left is our numerator which is 47. Moving to step two, we need to place a decimal point after the final digit of the number. Now, this decimal point is always there. However, when we're just writing whole numbers, we usually don't put it there. But because we are converting fractions to decimals, we are going to show that yes, there is a decimal point after 47. So it's not like we just put it there because we can. It is there because it's actually, that's how the number is written. For instance, for 47 in decimal, in decimal value, it is 47.0, okay? So again, step two, we place that decimal point after the final digit of the number, which is seven. Step three, we are going to move the decimal point to the left by the number of zeros we counted in step one. Remember, we counted two zeros. So that is the number of times we are going to move our decimal point to the left. We move it one time, the decimal point is between the four and the seven, we move it one more time to the left, the decimal point is right in front of the four. So our fraction, 47 over 100, converted to a decimal is 0 0.47. Let's move to our second strategy. For our second strategy, we have a fraction that if we look at the denominator, we could possibly make it a, base, a denominator with a base 10 number by multiplying it by a number. Let's look at an example. For our example, we have 1 fourth or 1 over 4. Step 1, we are going to find a number that we can multiply by the bottom of the fraction or again the denominator to make it either 10, 100, or 1000. Is there a number we can multiply to make 4 equal to 10 or 100? 
Yes, there is. If we multiply four times 25, that is equal to 100. So for our step two, we are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 25. Remember sixth graders, whenever we are multiplying anything by the numerator or the denominator, we must do it to both the top and the bottom. So we have multiplying our numerators, one times 25 is equal to 25. Now let's multiply our denominators. Four times 25 is equal 100. Our fraction is 25 over 100. This is an equivalent fraction of 1 fourth. For step three, we are going to use the same steps we did for our first strategy because we have a denominator with a base 10 number. We are going to count the number of zeros we have in the denominator. We have one, two, and then we are going to delete our denominator. Now we will be left with 25. For step four, we are going to place our decimal point at the final digit of the number, which is five. Remember, that decimal place is already there. With whole numbers, we usually don't write it. But because we are converting to a decimal, we're going to show where the decimal point is. Because we counted two zeros in the denominator, that is how many times we are going to move our decimal point to the left. We move it one time, the decimal point is between two and five. We move it one more time, and the decimal point is in front of the two. So 25 over 100 converted to a decimal is equal to 0 0.25. Now let's look at our very last strategy, which is long division. This is where students convert a fraction by dividing the denominator, known as the divisor, into the numerator, which is the dividend. Let's take a look at our example. For our first step, we are going to divide our numerator. If you notice, we have it highlighted in orange. The one is going to be inside the house and five, our denominator, which is our divisor, is outside of the house. They are knocking on the door because they want to come inside. Okay, when we're setting up our division problem, can five go into one? No, it cannot. So what we have to do is put a decimal place behind the one. Now, once we do that, what we do inside of the house, we also have to do on the rooftop. And if you notice that that decimal that is behind the one is lined straight with what's on top of the rooftop, okay? And we are going to add two zeros. Now, let's see if we can divide. Can five be divided into zero, I mean, into 10? Yes, it can. Five divided into 10 is equal to two. So we put the two behind our decimal point. Five times two is equal to 10. 10 minus 10 is equal to zero. We bring down our second zero. How many times can five go into zero? zero. So we have 0 0.20 as our answer. So in long division, one fifth converted to a decimal is equal to 0 0.20. And that is it for our three strategies of converting fractions to decimals. Remember, if you need some extra help 
or assistance with math problems or just understanding some of the concepts, we are offering online one-on-one -on -one tutoring for second to eighth graders. This is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. I will talk to you soon.